We want to welcome the Greater Accra Regional Minister, Member of Parliament for Ayawasu East, Honorable Henry Quarte, to the Perez Dome. We are glad to receive you in our midst today. A few months ago, in one of my sermons, I had to single you out for commendation, although I had never seen you before. As a matter of fact, today is my first time meeting you face to face. I read about and saw the effort you and your team are putting in to make Accra work and stand out as the capital of this dear nation of ours. The agenda you have set is a very laudable one and deserves to be supported by all well-meaning Ghanaians. My prayer is that as long as you remain the greater Accra Regional Minister, you will continually follow through with this agenda. In this nation, we see a lot of good initiatives that fade with time because we often compromise our systems with politics. Unfortunately, the truth is any nation that does not enforce its laws or get its systems to work is bound to fail. Honorable Minister, I am sure many people are commending you for what you are doing because sincerely, we believe Accra can become the cleanest city or at least one of the cleanest cities in Africa like our President Nana Adudankwe Ekufuadu stated some years back. There are some that may not want this because if the systems worked, it would inconvenience them and somehow affect their political fortunes. But I want to challenge you to be more interested in making the systems work than in politicking. Choose to make Accra work instead of engaging in partisanship. Just like I'm praising you today because you are doing the right thing, if you go wrong in future, expect me to say it and know that it would be nothing personal. <laughs> It's simply because I believe this nation can work. <laughs> of late, there have been coup d'etats in our sub-region. I want to clarify that in Ghana, we do not need a coup to make our nation work. <laughs> However, when you study the causes of the coups in our sub-region, the political class is largely to blame. In Ghana, we don't need a coup because our politicians sometimes listen to our complaints and uproar as a people. When we said there were too many ministers, they've cut it down. <laughs> we cried that they cannot pay the first and second lady. They listened. <laughs> However, our political class should not give anyone the impression that they entered into politics to grab or chop. Unfortunately, if you increase your salaries by 50% and increase that of the ordinary workers by 4%, you are clearly telling the working class that you are better than they are. I think it's reasonable to demand that either all get 4% or all get 50% plus. Since it will be borne by the taxpayers' money from the consolidated fund, but it cannot go just one way. If within four years a person comes into politics and is able to buy or build houses and own cars because of his involvement in politics, then ordinary citizens may begin to think that Ghanaian politics is purely a money-making enterprise. Whereas that may not be the case. And others who are working hard but are suffering to even make ends meet will inevitably feel shortchanged, dissatisfied with leadership, and discontented with the prospects of this nation. The ordinary Ghanaian has a salary and his allowances consolidated, but the political class pay taxes only on their salary, which is only 20% of their take home monies. There must be a level playing field. It is believed that most of our contemporaries in the West get into politics because they wish to contribute their wisdom and leadership competence to steer their nation forward. There is no reason why we shouldn't do the same in Ghanaian politics. Honorable Minister, 
In short, Ghanaians should not be made to feel like their resources are being wasted because of the selfish ambitions of a few. I will leave that discussion for another time. We all want this dear nation to work again. Church, let's remember our dear honorable minister in our prayers and be disciplined to help make his agenda to make Accra work again succeed. God bless all of you. Let us welcome our honorable Henry Pote to bring us greetings. Please take your seats. Uh, Bishop, our brothers and sisters gathered in here today worshiping. I came in the company of my senior sister, former Minister of Information, currently the advisor on communication to the president. Honorable Oboshisai Kofi. The Member of Parliament for Ayawasto West Wogon, who is Honorable Lydia Seridam. As a, a Deputy Majority Chief Whip in Parliament. Um, your MC, Honorable Sandra Hinkra. The MC for Ablikuma West, Honorable Bray. <laughs> MC for Ablikuma North, Honorable Kofi, known as Bella. <laughs> the Greater Accra Regional Women Organizer, Grace Champo. The MC for La Madina and Quantana, the famous uh, Zungo Junction, this is. The Deputy or Assistant Regional Secretary of the MPP, Alhaji Baba Seydou. The Great Akka Regional Research and Elections Officer, Ni Klot Emmanuel Ni Klote. and uh, some party faithfuls. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Bishop, first of all, we bring you greetings from His Excellency, the President, Nana Adodanko Akufuado. Let me say that uh, my attention was drawn to uh, one of the, in one of the sermons, Bishop talked about my good self and uh, commended me. And again, I've been reliably informed that uh, congregants of this church continue to pray for me. And I want to use the opportunity to thank all of you. And I know that uh, aside this congregation, a lot of pastors in this country and the world at large, and people continue to pray for me. And I want to use this opportunity to thank all for doing that. Today, we are here to worship with you, and also, with the greatest of respect, through the bishop, make a humble appeal to you. Yes, indeed, a certain Henry Quarte wants to make a crowd work. A crowd can only work if all of us get on board. I cannot do it alone. I do not have the power to do it alone. I don't have the strength to do it alone. But you and I can make it work. I have said continuously that it hurts for people to actually put in a request to go and leave, travel outside the country. The first day they do, first thing they do is to take a selfie and it might interest you to know, if it's not a green grass, then it's an escalator. Green grass. We go to Dubai and we spend two weeks. What is it that is in Dubai that we cannot do in our own country? 
if we are able to do it well, I believe some people will also take a leave to visit our country and that will boost our tourism. <laughs> I cannot be the blue man to be solving all the indiscipline challenges or problems in the country. But I believe that if we all see it as a clarion call, that is why I have to appeal again to bishops so, who uh, will begin with the churches. If all members can make it a point to help one way or the other in ensuring that wherever you find yourself, the environment is clean, discipline is maintained. We, on our part, in the executive, we'll do our best to make sure that the laws, the bylaws, are followed to the latter. And where um, applying the law to ensure that people are taken to the courts of competent jurisdiction to ensure that uh, some acts are not done again, we shall do that. I mean, recently you had uh, the father and daughter who decided to pound fufu at the Okwasi interchange. It's embarrassing, but then, hey, we, we had to send her to court. Just yesterday, my attention was drawn to uh, a mason who decided to mix concrete right there, the, around the pig farm runabout, in the middle of the streets. I've got them arrested. They are behind bars. But my appeal is that usually when these things happen, you get people saying, ah, Henry has taken the law into his hands. So it makes it difficult. I've seen a post recently in the United States of America where somebody packs a vehicle in his own backyard in the green grass and he was issued with a ticket because he has parked on the green grass. Are we able to do that in this country? I don't know. The question, I leave it to you. Bishop, um, I am also happy to announce to you that uh, Mr. President and his ministers, uh, there's a directive actually from Mr. President, so um, salaries of ministers have been reduced. And again, <laughs> again, Mr. President has returned uh, just under 300,000 Ghana cities as uh, money that the increment to his salary. So I thought I should make this known to you. Well, um, on the issue of uh, joining the politics to make wealth for oneself, that is an individual basis. But we have a president who has always told us, if you want to make money, then not in my government. But indeed, uh, if you be a Mensa woman, so we will do our best uh, to get things going. My humble appeal to all of you is that very soon we'll be launching Operation Clean Your Frontage. And that is key to ensuring that we bring back the cleanliness that we used to have. I mean, when I was growing up, there's something we call Papa Tank Cancer. They come to your house and they dip a stick into your water to check if it's, uh, today is no more there. We have been able to get all the MMDAs to pass the bylaw. At the moment, uh, we are looking at it. It will be gazetted very soon. Once we launch it, it will now become an offense under the bylaws for uh, a landlord, a landlady, or a business to have rubbish in front of your uh, property. I pray that uh, uh, Ghanaians will help us, more especially in Accra. This is a cosmopolitan region, so we are all in it together. If Accra works, Ghana works. And Ghana will work if Accra works and we need you to help us in doing so. It works well when the clarion call, the response to it starts from the churches, and that is why we are here to do so. And uh, I put my hands, my, myself, my team, and my life in the hands of God. So you continue to pray for us and pray for Mr. President so that we are able to deliver and we are able to serve the good people of this country. I thank you all and God bless you. 
church, will you please stand, stretch forth your hands towards him. Let's pray for him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Honorable Harry Kwate. We thank you for his team. Thank you for what you are doing with them. We pray your spirit of grace. We pray that everybody in the city will mobilize behind them and together we'll get Accra clean. We pray that your hand of protection will be upon him, his family, all his team members. No wishes of men will work against him and your name will be exalted in his life. We use him as a point of contact for the president. We ask for strength, health, physical, vital. We pray for insight. We pray for foresight. We pray that Lord, during his tenure of office, you will use him like never before. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And will the saints say, Amen. Thank you very much. Amen.